Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever you might be watching this video Bible study. It is good to be able to study God's Word with you again today. We're going to continue looking at the various accounts that the Bible records for us of Jesus appearing to his disciples and to others after he rose from the dead on Easter Sunday morning. Let's begin with prayer. Lord Jesus, we ask that you send your spirit to strengthen our faith so that we might put our doubts and our demands to the side and to humbly trust you in all that you say. We ask this in your name. Amen. I'll believe it when I see it. Someone has told you something, but you're having a really hard time believing that it's true. Why? It might be because the person telling you this most amazing thing hasn't always been the most honest with you or hasn't always done exactly what they said in the past, and now you're having a hard time trusting them. Or it might be that it is something so outlandish, something that doesn't seem possible, that you just have a really hard time believing that this could ever even happen. I'll believe it when I see it. I think that there's probably a little part, and sometimes maybe a not so little part of us, that is the cynic living inside of each of us that has a hard time believing things. We've, we've been burned in the past and we don't want to get burned again. So we doubt and then we make demands. Give me the evidence. And until I get the evidence, I won't believe it. The next appearance of Jesus after his resurrection is one that I think that we can all appreciate because I'm guessing that like me, you've probably been there wondering how it could possibly be that what the Bible says, what God says, could be true. There's still a part of us that wants to say to God, I'll believe it when I see it. So my question to you today is, how do we overcome that doubt? Here's the interesting part. We don't, but Jesus does. Let's see how. We're going to go to John chapter 20, beginning at verse 24. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Let's stop there for a moment. The Gospel writer John provides some details about that account that we looked at last time which the Gospel of Luke did not include. For example, Jesus said more than peace be with you when he suddenly appeared before his disciples on Easter evening. In fact, he said something that built upon that idea of the peace that only Jesus can give to people, the peace of sins forgiven. He said to his disciples, John records for us, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Jesus gave his disciples, along with every Christian, remember that there were more than just the 11 disciples there on that Easter evening in that room. Jesus gave every Christian the special right, the privilege to announce God's forgiveness. That's right, you can announce to a person who is repentant of their sin, that is, who recognizes their sin, has confessed their sin to God, who trusts in God's forgiveness and then desires to turn from sin, you get to be the voice of Jesus and to say what he would say if he were physically standing there right in front of them. Your sins are forgiven. You are at peace with God. Jesus also gives us the responsibility of announcing to a person who is impenitent, that is, refusing to recognize the seriousness of their sin with the intention of continuing in that sin. God gives us the responsibility to announce to that person that they are rejecting God's forgiveness and, and losing out on that peace that comes from it. To the impenitent, Jesus calls us to announce to that person that they are not forgiven, but also with the hope and the intention that that, that person would repent and then we would have the opportunity to announce God's forgiveness to them. Now, the disciple John not only includes those additional details about what Jesus said, 
but he also includes who was, or maybe more accurately, who was not there in that room on Easter Sunday evening. One of Jesus' disciples was missing, Thomas, also known as Didymus. So you might ask, well, where was Thomas? Well, the Bible doesn't say. Maybe he went to pick up some food or to take a walk. We just don't know. Who was Thomas? Well, the name Thomas is the Aramaic word for twin. And we're told that he had the nickname, it appears, of Didymus, which is the Greek word for twin. So if you put that together, the name seemed to indicate that Thomas probably had a twin. Now, like many of Jesus' disciples, we, we don't know much about Thomas and his background. He, he's named in two other accounts recorded by John as well. In John chapter 11, verse 16, Thomas shows his devotion to Jesus as they were headed to the vicinity of Jerusalem for the funeral of Lazarus. Remember that account? Thomas is the one who says to his fellow disciples as they're approaching, let us also go that we may die with him. And during the Passover meal on Thursday evening, Thomas was the one who asked Jesus for further explanation of where Jesus was going and how to get there. Unfortunately, most people don't associate those words and those actions of faith with Thomas. Instead, Thomas is probably best known for what he said here in these verses. Now, you can imagine the excitement of the disciples when Thomas walked through the door on Easter evening. Having returned from wherever he was, they said to Thomas, We have seen the Lord. And you can almost picture Thomas first responding, Hey guys, that's not funny. We all know what happened to Jesus. He's dead, and dead people don't come back from the dead. It might have even been that Thomas thought that he had gotten his hopes up, believing that Jesus really was the Messiah, and now look what, where that had gotten him. Disappointment and heartache. He wasn't going to go down that road again. And so he indicates what it's going to take to believe what the disciples were telling him. He didn't just want to see Jesus. He wanted to touch Jesus. And not just to wrap his arms around Jesus, but, but Thomas is pretty specific here. He says, I want to put my finger where the nails were and put my hands into his side. As I read those words, you can almost sense not just Thomas's skepticism, but, but I think a mixture of sadness and anger. So have you ever been there? Have you ever felt like Jesus let you down? That he made a promise, but you just don't see how it's ever going to happen? It feels impossible. He promises goodness, but the pain feels overwhelming. He promises his presence, but you feel all alone. He promises strength, but you're worn out. He promises peace, but the guilt keeps coming back. There you are, standing right alongside of Thomas, thinking, I'm done with this. I can't be disappointed. Before you throw in the towel and give up, just keep on reading. John chapter 20, verse 26. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my sight. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. I can only imagine it must have been a really long week for those disciples. I can't help but think that they were probably constantly trying to convince Thomas of what they had seen and Thomas continually just balked at it. And then it happened. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Man, you can only imagine the reaction of Thomas, right? But you don't need to imagine the reaction of Jesus. It, it's the same as the previous weeks when all of the disciples were in Thomas's shoes, doubting that Jesus was alive. Jesus announces, yes, even to Thomas, peace be with you. He turns to Thomas and he offers what Thomas had demanded of Jesus. But did you notice? 
that Thomas didn't even need to touch Jesus. He simply replies, my Lord and my God. Thomas confesses his faith in Jesus. And with his words, he reminds himself and us of why he never needed to doubt Jesus. Jesus is Lord and God. He rules over all, including death itself, controls all of history, is God of the past, the present, and the future. What God says, no one and nothing can stop him from doing. Jesus then goes on to say those, those beautiful words of promise, blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Faith is not about seeing. It's about trusting in what you can't see. And that means that you better make sure that you place your trust in someone or something that is honest, truthful, and has the power to deliver what it says. And that's what Jesus is. Now, maybe you're sitting there thinking, I trust Jesus if he appeared to me too, really. So if Jesus stood there in front of you, you would believe in him then? I, actually, I'm not so sure about that. I, I actually think that Jesus has done something better than making just a, a single personal appearance to every Christian. Jesus records his entire story from the very beginning of time. He takes us to the creation account and demonstrates his power, his wisdom, and his love. He takes us to the fall into sin and he demonstrates his love, forgiveness, and dedication to save all of humanity. He walks us through the Old Testament and demonstrates his faithfulness, his care, and his planning. He shows us his miraculous entrance into the world, his perfect life, his instruction, his death, and his resurrection. And he shows us all of these things and then says, that's why you can trust me. Like Thomas, we don't need to touch Jesus because Jesus has already touched our hearts so that you and I can also say to Jesus, my Lord and my God. He's the one that quiets our doubts and calms down our demands and says, trust me, peace be with you. And he blesses us with peace and comfort and calm and confidence and courage and patience and, and a whole host of other really good things. It's all yours, not because you've seen Jesus, but because you believe in Jesus who always does what he says, even when it seems unbelievable to us. That's where we're going to stop today. Next time, we're going to go to that third time that Jesus appeared to his disciples finding them doing something that they would have been very familiar with, fishing. As always, I would invite you to join us this coming weekend for worship, whether that's at Star of Bethlehem here online, or if you're from the area and in our community, come in and visit us in person. Have a great week, and we'll see you next time for some more Bible study.